In the headphone space, Cord is most well known for their DACs, either their standalone DACs like the Dave, or products positioned directly as DAC and amp combo units like the Cord Mojo 2. But their company origins and much of their experience is in the realm of analog amplifiers and preamplifiers, with their Ultima lineup being quite well regarded in the speaker world. And now they're bringing some of that tech to the headphone space with the Alto, a dedicated desktop headphone amplifier, borrowing some of the technology from their Ultima lineup and delivering some results that I found to be quite unique. The outside of the device is quite distinctly cord, with the signature glowing glass marbles and controls, an indented volume control, and an overall design aesthetic that wouldn't be out of place on the USS Orville. The Alto takes both single-ended and balanced inputs, and offers four options for headphone outputs, including two quarter-inch jacks, one 3.5mm single-ended, and one 4.4mm pseudo-balanced output. Though it is important to note that the amplifier itself is a single-ended design, so the 4.4mm output is mostly just there for compatibility, but still nice to have. Besides the usual inputs and outputs that you'll find on most headphone amps, there are some things here which you wouldn't typically expect to see on competing products. The Alto isn't actually marketed towards the audiophile market, it's primarily marketed towards the professional audio market. So for people wanting to use the Alto as the analog hub for their monitoring or production setup, you can actually use this to directly power speakers. On the rear you'll find some speaker taps, and the Alto can deliver a pretty beefy 50 watts into 4 ohms or 25 watts into 8 ohms to run passive speakers or monitors. Or if you're using active studio monitors, then you can also use the XLR lineouts, which can be toggled using the control on the front to run simultaneously with the headphone output, or swap between them so that only one or the other is actively in use. One other rather unique feature of the Alto is that it offers a 12 volt DC power output, meaning you can directly power another device like a DAC, a mini DSP, or a monitoring display directly from the Alto itself, which is a pretty neat thing to include. Taking a look inside, this is a tightly packed unit. There's a lot inside this little box. We can see filtering and regulation for the power supply, a huge amount of local energy storage for the amplifier, a motor for the potentiometer, yes it is a motorized volume control. The heatsink covering the transistors is definitely needed as this amplifier does run pretty toasty. You've got quite a lot of power packed into a small box here and this is not a class D amp or anything, this is a class AB amplifier so getting 50 watts into 4 ohms out of this is pretty impressive but it does run a little bit hot. For the headphone outputs, I got just over 7 watts into 32 ohm and around 16 watts into 12 ohm, and there's also no signs of rising distortion as we go towards the upper output levels, which is something which can be a little bit misleading about some other amps. A lot of amplifiers, even if they can deliver lots of power at maximum, so the max power at 32 ohm spec might be really high, they could still be distorting way more at 2 watts than they are at a tenth of a watt. In fact, on the screen now you can see an amp which can do quite happily 5 watts at 32 ohms, but it's still distorting significantly more at just 2 watts output than it is at about half a watt. But the Alto seems quite happy right up until it hits its maximum voltage limit, and in fact if we change this graph to show the x-axis as output voltage in dBV rather than in watts, we can see that as the load impedance goes down, meaning it's a little bit more difficult and it demands more current for the same voltage, the overall level of distortion does go up a bit regardless of level, so it's a little bit load variant, but there isn't much change, and personally I do feel that having an amplifier behave consistently with a headphone rather than distorting way more for that high amplitude drum kick because it's demanding a higher output than the lower level vocals or something is more important than whether or not this is going to change depending on what headphone you plug into it. But how does the Alto sound? What's it most similar to? And what headphones are best paired with it? Well, the Alto is what I describe as a slightly warm, slightly rich sounding amp. It's not a strictly speaking neutral amp. But what I really like about it, and why I'm quite enthusiastic about it, is that there aren't many amps which do a slightly warmer sound as well as this does. And what I mean by that is that a lot of the other slightly warmer sounding amps that I've tried tend to have some pretty significant drawbacks, particularly in terms of either how well they handle busy tracks, they have a higher tendency to get a bit congested and hard to just pick out one thing because the overall warmth is kind of muddying things slightly, or just straight up detail retrieval, they're just often not as detailed as more neutral sounding amps. And the party trick for the Alto is that it gives you the warmth, the extra richness, while still being incredibly detailed and exceptionally good when tracks get busy. If you're looking at the Alto as an upgrade to a lot of topping SMSL amps or even some higher end but more neutrally tuned amps like a Ferramore or something, this isn't probably going to be it. Not because it's not necessarily an upgrade, but just because it's got a bit of a different sound. It is a little bit warmer, it is not a strictly speaking neutral sounding amp. In fact, the amps that I think this is a most direct upgrade to are either most of the Burson amps or one which is actually more expensive than the Alto, but I think this is a straight up upgrade to it, the Enlium Amp 23R. 
The Alto has a similar overall level of extra warmth and richness to the sound as the Enlim 23R and most of the bursts and stuff that I've tried, but it seemed noticeably better in terms of the transient handling and sudden macrodynamic stuff in particular. The 23R was no slouch in terms of slam or macrodynamic impact, but it wasn't quite up to par with the Ferrum Ore or the Hollow Bliss, whereas the Alto is throwing heavy punches without breaking a sweat. There is a lot of power on tap here, and as we saw in the distortion versus level measurements, pretty consistent behaviour, whereas the Amp 23R does start to rise in distortion as you output more than about 0.3 volts, meaning the higher amplitude portions of music can distort more than the lower level ones. As to why the Alto does have a bit of extra body to its subjective sounds, well, it does have a moderate amount of harmonic distortion compared to something like an Aw or a Bliss. But two things that caught my eye were that, firstly, the distribution of harmonics is pretty even in level. It's not dominant in just even or just odd, or in fact in just low or just high order. It's got pretty equal levels of everything, and that does seem to give a bit of extra heft to the subjective result. But also, if we have a look at the total harmonic distortion versus frequency, low frequency content from the Alto is quite a bit lower in THD than the high frequency stuff, and given the Alto's harmonic distortion profile, I think this is quite important. For an amplifier that only had second order harmonic distortion, for example, it wouldn't really matter if it was higher in level for the bass content because, well, the second harmonic of 50 hertz is 100 hertz. So the bass content playing louder is only going to be adding some harmonic distortion within the bass region itself. But with the Alto, where its harmonic distortion profile extends out quite far, even the 15th harmonic, for example, is pretty similar in level to the second harmonic, the 15th harmonic of 50 Hz is 750 Hz, so if this had the same amount of harmonic distortion in the bass as it did at higher frequencies, then higher levels of bass content playing in a song could audibly disturb and screw up what's going on in the mid-range. But instead, the bass content here is much lower in distortion, and so subjectively to me, the bass content from this is just playing on its own, it's tight, punchy, controlled, and then the mid-range and treble doesn't get disturbed by it. This does not get muddied up or congested when tracks get busier. And then it's able to do that and have tight, controlled bass content whilst still adding some warmth and richness to the mid-range and treble content. And I mention this specifically because that was a particular weak point of the Enlium Amp 23R. It had a bit of a tendency to get kind of congested and woolly sounding when tracks got busier or when there was more bass content playing. Now, I think that's more to do with the distortion versus level on that rather than the profile because it only extends to about the third harmonic anyway. But still, subjectively, it did tend to lose detail and overall technical performance for busier or bassier tracks. But the Alto, that's not at all the case. It can be a little bit difficult if you've not had the opportunity to try lots of audio gear before to work out what kind of sound signature do you actually like best. Should you go for something that's a little bit richer and warmer than neutral? Should you go for something that's a little bit more clinical and analytical? Or should you go for something that is as transparent and neutral sounding as possible? But if you buy through headphones.com, it doesn't matter because even if you decide eight months down the line, Actually, this isn't quite doing it for me. You can just send it back with no worries whatsoever. And if you want personal support, trying to work out what's going to work best for you, or support with something that you've already got from someone who knows audio and is just as into this as you and I, not some chatbot or outsource support agent, then Headphones.com's live chat will connect you to their support staff, all of whom are just as into audio as you and myself. So if you like content like this and want to help support it, then consider Headphones.com for your next purchase. On the alto, playing a song like La Esperanza by Clapton, the low frequency synths and heavy kicks are just playing on their own, nice, tight, controlled, punchy, and not particularly rich or warm compared to what I would expect them to sound like out of a Ferrum Ore, an HM1, or something more neutral. The bass content out of this is particularly well defined and untouched. Meanwhile, the female vocals in this song are just allowed to play unobstructed, but with a little bit of extra richness and warmth to them, which particularly when paired with something like a Sennheiser HD800 works absolutely beautifully. The Hyperman Sesvara also worked excellently on the alto, and in particular because of how open and airy the treble was, something that is also not often the case on warmer sounding amps. Again, the alto is giving me similar levels of overall added richness to the general tone of music compared to something like a Burson Soloist or an Andium Amp 23R, but the upper treble in particular just sounds so much more unobstructed, unrestricted, and technically capable. Faster electronic music like Landscape by Drolo was just as snappy and fast as the awe, and the overall sense of space when listening to Joe Hisaishi's Summer was quite a bit more open and natural sounding from a soundstage perspective than what I got from the 23R, 
getting on towards what I'd expect from a Zal HM1. What I love about the alto is that you get that slight extra body to the vocals and strings, but you don't lose incisiveness. You don't end up with something that just gets woolly or congested when there's a lot going on. You get that warmth that a lot of people prefer, especially with headphones that can benefit from it, whilst maintaining the technical prowess and overall detail retrieval, especially for bassier or busier tracks, that usually you do have to stick to a more neutral amp to retain. There's only really a couple other amps I can think of that do this mix of adding a bit of warmth whilst not losing incisiveness basically at all that I can think of, and most of them are actually tube amps. The Wu Wa 33, for example, does exactly this. It is a massively technically capable amp, but just sweetens up the treble ever so slightly. But the thing is, with tubes, you do get a bit of a different kind of spatial presentation. People call tubes holographic, and I would tend to agree. They do give you a more holographic, sort of euphonic effect to the sound, that I don't always want. In fact, that's why I don't have a tube amp as my main amplifier and another reason why this is particularly special. I absolutely love the holographic effect that you can get from a tube amp, but it's not something that sounds correct to me and not something that I want to use as my main amplifier. That's a sound that I want to have available for when the mood calls for it, but for my main daily driver amplifier, I want a capable but accurate representation. That's why I love the Zal HM1, the Mascobo 465, and the Alto is doing this particular aspect well too. It is a top tier, solid state presentation of depth, as well as detail and bass control. It adds a little bit of tasteful warmth and richness to the upper parts of the mid-range and treble, but rather uniquely, and why I think it's a straight up upgrade to something like an Enlium Amp 23R, it doesn't seem to be making basically any sacrifices in order to do that. So is this the perfect amp for everyone? No, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're wanting the most transparent, accurate sound that you can get, then a Ferrum Ore or a Hollow Bliss are going to be better for that. But if you're looking for an upgrade to a Burson amplifier, an Enium Amp 23R, you're wanting something that gives you a slightly richer than strictly neutral presentation without sacrificing top tier detail, bass impact, and overall technical performance, then the Alto is uniquely exceptional at this. And then you throw in the fact that you can run speakers directly off this as well, which I haven't unfortunately gotten a chance to try, but it's a pretty compelling package. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions you wanted to ask about the Alto, any other DAC, amplifier, headphone, or anything to do with audio at all, then head over to the Headphones.com forum or the Headphones.com Discord server, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. Until next time, thanks for watching.